It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Being a woman in the workplace can be difficult to navigate. There are different standards that apply to each sex, and often women end up being too nice. Does this sound familiar? Joining us today to explain how you can advocate for yourself while advancing your career is Dr. Lois Frankel. Dr. Frankel is the author of the New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling Nice Girls Don't Business books. She's the president of Corporate Coaching International and is recognized for her business coaching and empowerment of women. Dr. Frankel has appeared on the Today Show, CNN, and NPR, and she and her books have been featured in USA Today, the New York Times, People, and the Washington Post, among others. Her new audiobook is Nice Girls Don't Speak Up or Stand Out, how to make your voice heard, your point known, and your presence felt. Welcome, Dr. Frankel. Thank you so much for joining us. Joan, thank you for having me. So, Lois, you're the creator of the Nice Girls Don't Business books. What is your definition of a nice girl? Yeah, a nice girl is someone who acts according to the behaviors or expectations that she learned in childhood. And those could come from parents, and they, they often do, but they could also come from teachers, from um, Madison Avenue, uh, from the church, from all kinds of uh, places that young girls and little girls get, get bombarded with these messages. And so um, sometimes they're cultural, sometimes they're regional, but when you act according to those messages that you heard in childhood, you can't achieve your adult goals. Now, some of those messages about being nice are important. Of course, we all have to be nice. So nice is necessary, but it's not sufficient. How does a woman balance being too nice with standing up for herself? Because I know sometimes when I stand up for myself, there's a lot of criticism that comes with that. Yeah, you know, there's two two ways I'd like to address that. First is, the fact is, when it comes to communication, there's different rules for men and women. We don't like women who communicate like men, and we don't like men who communicate like women. And so women need to learn to do what Kathleen Kelly Reardon calls walking the thin pink line. And the way we do that is by learning to tell people to go to hell so they look forward to the trip. <laughs> and that exactly what I try to do in this book, is give women the tools and techniques and the tips and the models for how to do exactly that with courage and confidence because speaking your mind and being assertive should never damage a relationship. Now, sometimes it does, but if you do it properly, it's not because of who you are. It says more about the other person. So it's one reason um, why, Joan, I ask that this book be audio because when I started writing it, I realized and these words are not going to translate from the page to what it sounds like for someone to do it. So I pitched it as an audio book to Hachette so that people could actually hear me saying um, not just the tip, but uh, uh, demonstrating how it sounds in real time. So um, to answer your question more specifically, uh, there are certain things that you can do that are going to enable you not to be called that dreaded B word, right? Mm -hmm. Let's start with one tip that I give, and that is using contrasting. Now, contrasting is when you say to someone what you do want and what you don't want. So it might sound like this. It might sound, Joan, I don't want you to think that I'm not grateful for everything you've done for me since I've come to this company because I certainly am. At the same time, I do need to talk to you about my salary because at this point, I'm not being compensated fairly. And I believe that there are three reasons why a raise is in order. See, now in that case, I'm not going to go into the whole raise thing because all I want you to hear is the contrasting, what I do want and what I don't want. Joan, how did that sound to you? It's definitely effective. And as you were saying that, I, I was thinking that a mistake I make, and I'm sure a lot of other people make, is we go in trying to fight for what it is we want, hitting someone over the head. That's right. You know, and I even have a saying in the book about you don't have to put a, um, a stamp on with a steamroller. 
-hmm. In fact, it's more effective for women if we don't. And so that contrasting technique is one simple way. Let me give you another example of how you can have a difficult conversation because all of us have to have difficult conversations from time to time. And there's a model in the book that I call the DESCript, script, D E S C. The D stands for describe why I want to have the conversation. The E is explain my viewpoint and elicit yours. The S stands for specify uh, what I, the, uh, I'm sorry, the S stands for specify what I want, and C is um, create consequences. Let me play this out with you now for a minute. I'm going to make up a situation that is not true. I want your listeners to understand this isn't true. Mm -hmm. This is just something that I'm using for the sake of um, an example. And if I were to say to you, and I want you to listen to me using the DESC, Joan, there's something that I'd like to talk to you about, and it's, it's about what happens in meetings when we're together. What I've noticed is that when I start to speak, you often pick up your tablet or your, or your cell phone, and you start um, being distracted by them and not listening to what I have to say. And it makes me feel as if what I have to say isn't important enough to you. And I'm wondering how you see the situation, Joan. Now, how might you respond to me? And don't make it easy for me. I think that I would say something like, can you explain more to me about how you're feeling? Okay. And then I would say, you know, thank you so much for being open to me with regard to this. And I'll give you an example of what happened in the meeting just last week. And then for the sake of time, I'm going to stop there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, most importantly, Joan, I'm glad that you're open to this. And let me tell you what would be really helpful to me is if in the future, when I start to speak, if you could listen for points that you could add to, because you have a lot of expertise, you have a lot of knowledge. And if you were to add to my points, I really feel as if um, that the team would benefit from our collective wisdom. And when that happens, we become a winning team. Mm -hmm. That's how the desk script sounds. I described why I wanted to talk to you. I explained how I felt about things. I elicited your viewpoint. I specified what I wanted. And I said what the consequence would be. We'd be a winning team. I would have apologized after hearing that and probably said something like, I wasn't aware that I was doing that. Which, isn't that a win-win? I mean, mm -hmm. that's the best of all possible worlds. But, Joan, you may have said, you might have been more belligerent and said, you know, Lois, I think you're taking this to an extreme. I think... You know, you're just thin-skinned. I don't feel like I do that that often. Now, I'm still not going to argue with you, and I'm still not going to give you those awful you messages. Instead, I'm going to say, you know, Joan, it sounds like we see things differently. Let me tell you what it is I would appreciate that you would do to help me out. And I just move right into problem solving. I don't get into a spitting match with you. Mm -hmm. And this is also a wonderful technique in any interpersonal relationship, not just on the job. Uh, absolutely. You know, we take who, who we are everywhere, don't we? And so learning to communicate in these ways uh, is so important in many situations. And, and I'll give you a really quick example. You know, I brought my car into the car dealership the other day because the audible blind spot um, mechanism wasn't working. And I'm blind in my right eye, so I really need that working. And I bought the car for that reason. And I brought the car in. And they called me the next day, I had to leave it, and they called me the next day, uh, not the next day, it was several days later, as a matter of fact. And they said, you know, this guy starts mansplaining to me, okay? He starts mansplaining to me about, well, you know, the car never had that, and uh, we don't really know what you're talking about. He's just going on and on and on, right? Now, here, I used a couple of techniques here. One was the contrasting, but one was also um, being clear coming in what I want going out. So what I said to him was, and I had to interrupt him because he was going on and on. So I very politely interrupted, and I said, I said, Tony, excuse me here. I'm going to interrupt you a second, and I don't want you to think I don't respect what you're saying because I do, you know, and I know you know your business. At the same time, I know my car, and I know why I bought that car. It was because it had that audible blind spot mechanism, and I know it was working, and it's not working now. So all I really want to know is, how do we get it working again? Now, Tony, there's nothing for Tony to say to that, right? Other mm -hmm. than, well, let me double check and get back to you. And that's all I wanted. I didn't want to be mansplained to. I didn't want to be, because at one point I felt like I was being gaslighted. Right. I didn't want to be gaslighted. I knew why I bought that car, and I knew that it worked. 
and I think many women would just say, "Oh, really? You know, well, that you know, I don't understand because it didn't work. It worked for me before." No, you don't have to do all that. You can do it just as clearly as I just did it. You've helped countless women become effective communicators and therefore more empowered on the job. When that happens, what types of results do they see? Yeah, it's really great. I have to tell you, I am like I feel so blessed that I get these let I get feedback. I get for what I do, which many people don't. Um, I get letters and comments on my LinkedIn. I got a bunch of them yesterday, and um, people saying, "You know what? I followed your tips for asking a raise, and I got it." Or, you know what? I addressed that difficult conversation, uh, that difficult person in the work in the workplace, and although they didn't change, I felt so much better about myself that I do it more often now. I don't put up with people who um, treat me badly, or you know, I learned how to go in and negotiate unreasonable expectations, or I got the promotion that I wanted, or you know, I asked for the job I wanted. So those are some of the results that I hear, and it is so heartwarming to me to know that something that I, I wrote or that I said or that people could hear um, made a difference in their lives. You've been working for the empowerment of women. Do you believe that we're being treated more fairly today? No. <laughs> um, and I, I said that exactly like that because I also wanted to model the way for when you're asked a direct question, how to deliver an answer that gets attention. So as soon as I said no, Right. I'm sure that you stopped and thought, what is she going to say next? Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I say no for three reasons. Number one, we we can look at certain women who the system is working for them, but we can't say it's working for everyone and we can't leave any women behind. So even when we talk about, um, you know, pay for women is going up. I always say, well, wait a minute. If you look at pay for women of color, it's not going up, and it's less than that than for Caucasian women doing the same job. So that's one reason I say no. Another reason I say no is because all you have to do is look around the world or our country, and what you see is not women in power. You see men in power. And as long as men have the power, women will always be conforming to their sense of how we should be doing things. You know, it's it's partly like when people say to me, well, but look at the change on the Supreme Court. We've got many more women. And I say, I'll be happy when it's all women and we're not counting anymore because it was all men for a long time because they hired the most qualified people. Well, there'll come a time when the most qualified people will be all women. And do will will our country have the courage to say that and not count anymore how many there are. So, um, and then the third reason why I say no, I don't think we're making that much progress, is because um, I look at women in um, toxic relationships. And whether that's at home, whether it's at work, uh, we haven't provided women with the tools to disengage from toxic relationships and expect that they're going to be treated differently. And so those are just three reasons why I say, no, I don't think that we have made um, a lot lot of progress. It's being made at glacial speed. The book is Nice Girls Don't Speak Up or Stand Out, How to Make Your Voice Heard, Your Point Known, and Your Presence Felt. If you'd like to get more information, you can visit drloisfrankel.com. That's drloisfrankel.com. And as always, you can visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, follow us on social media, and be sure to subscribe to our mailing list. Dr. Frankel, in our final moments, what's a takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? What I'd like to leave them with is that everything that they do or they want in life stems from some kind of communication right? Everything stems from some kind of communication. And so taking the time to learn how to communicate with courage, confidence, diplomacy, and tact is going to be an investment that pays off for you over the course of your life. And I don't care if you're 18 or you're 78, we communicate all the time. And so what you want to do is you want to go from sometimes feeling you're invi- invisible to feeling invincible. 
And I feel like my book, uh, Nice Girls Don't Speak Up or Stand Out, will really help you to do that. If people will go to my website, drloisfrankel.com, as you said, and let me know that they purchased the book. Uh, and, they, and, and if they click on the new book tab uh, on the homepage on the, uh, on the uh, website, they'll be taken to a page where they can purchase it. But if they let me know then that they purchased it and they heard me on your show, I'll send them a free companion workbook. Dr. Frankel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure, Joan. This is Conversations with Joan. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.